Hello, I'm Michael Farinacci. I'm a staff software engineer at VMware, and my talk is securing microservices with a service mesh in the real world. I'm going to cover network and infrastructure trends. I'm going to answer the question, what is a service mesh? Also answer the question, what is missing with current meshes? And I'm going to cover global namespaces, which is what I'm currently working on. I believe that enterprise networks have changed, creating new challenges, not only with routing, but also with security. Enterprise networks are increasingly becoming multi-cloud, multi-location, multi-platform. You have different providers uh, in the cloud. You have your own private data centers. You have different ISP providers, SD-WAN potentially on top of that. You have private lines. You have many locations. It could be many data centers, many um, offices, uh, edge computing. Uh, you could have Kubernetes running anywhere. You could have VMs. So now you're mixing monoliths with the new containerization microservice architectures. Um, all of this creates unique challenges from a networking perspective. The size of the network has increased and the types of devices that are accessing the network have also changed as well. A lot of them are now, now ephemeral and it's very difficult to track who's actually on the network at any given time. The Kubernetes network model presents very unique challenges. To start with, a Kubernetes pod on any given node of a Kubernetes cluster should be able to communicate with all other pods on all other nodes of the cluster without using that. That means deploying a pod and interconnecting it with other pods in the Kubernetes cluster is super easy by default, but it also means that you are now taking much greater risks with security and lateral attacks if your pod ever becomes compromised is much more severe and damaging. And when you consider that these clusters can exist anywhere in the network and are all interconnected, it becomes even more clear that it's very difficult to contain a breach when it does happen. And it's very difficult to track where the breach is because all of these pods are very short lived and it's very difficult to track uh, without identities associated with everything that's on the network. We identified the problems that exist with current network trends and application uh, architecture changes. We can uh, segue into uh, what is a service mesh because that is a potential solution to these problems. Before we talk about how a service mesh can solve all of our networking and security problems, let's first discuss what it is by going over the features it provides us. And in my opinion, there's three main features. There's traffic management, security, and observability. With traffic management, we get automatic load balancing, routing rules, rate limits, and quotas. With security, you get service authentication and authorization, that's through MTLS, and you can employ a zero trust network model, which would mean all communication that occurs needs to be whitelisted and anything that isn't whitelisted cannot happen, which is very different from a vanilla Kubernetes uh, application deployment where everything can access everything else. And with observability, you get metrics, logs, and traces for all traffic within a cluster. You can sample uh, all of these things after a certain point in scale, but for the most part, you get uh, visibility that did not exist before. There isn't just one service mesh, there's actually quite a few and they all address the traffic management, security and observability uh, challenges that exist in this new um, Kubernetes environment. Uh, I personally have used Istio and that's what I'll discuss uh, further during this talk. Istio's architecture is actually a control plane and a data plane. The data plane is Envoy uh, sidecar proxies, which exist in every single pod that's part of the mesh. And then you have a control plane that is a collection of microservices that all have individual jobs. Uh, I won't go into individual details because the architecture has actually changed to something that's much more easy to manage. The microservice uh, control plan for Istio was quite complicated to maintain and manage. And as a result, the architecture has shifted to 
something uh, that resembles more of a monolith, and that's called IstioD, where you only need to deploy a uh, single pod uh, to manage your entire Istio control plane. It's easier to uh, operate a single pod for your mesh than uh, uh, the many pods that existed in the old architecture. And I believe this is uh, a step in the right direction for stability uh, and um, manageability. The modern network has quite a few attack vectors. For instance, we are now reliant on DNS for service discovery and DNS can be hijacked. Uh, we also have flat networks, so uh, route injection is possible. End result being that uh, we are now potentially exposed uh, to men in the middle attacks. We may be talking to uh, destinations that are not trusted and to solve these problems, we can uh, move towards encrypting everything on our network. And Istio provides uh, authentication and authorization uh, out of the box, and it's actually quite good. Um, Istio provides workload identity uh, using Kubernetes service accounts as a potential principle, uh, end user uh, request, uh, request level authentication uh, using JWTs is possible, uh, and uh, principle can be from the transport MTLS or origin authentication. Uh, authorization uh, is possible with RBAC, and you can uh, supply optional one conditions to uh, uh, make your RBAC policies even more secure. Istio uses Kubernetes service accounts to identify who the service runs as, and the identity is assigned uh, at service deployment time and encoded in the SAN field of an X509 certificate. Um, both the source and destination are authenticated uh, via a TLS handshake, and all requests go through the uh, Envoy proxies. So TLS, uh, uh, MTLS is between source and destination, and you don't have to worry about putting that into your service logic at all. And you can apply policies to the source or destination uh, or both at the same time. And uh, you can also uh, put optional conditions uh, on top of when that can happen. Service to service communication with Istio is mutual TLS. It's automatic mesh wide per namespace or per service. Uh, there are some costs associated with it, for example, with 1,000 services, 2,000 sidecars, and 70,000 mesh-wide uh, requests per second. Uh, the Envoy proxy uses half a CPU and 50 MB per 1,000 requests per second going through the proxy, and the Envoy proxy adds 2.76 milliseconds to the 90th percentile latency. There is a cost with uh, deploying a service mesh, but I think that it is more than worthwhile uh, from a security vantage point. And uh, mutual TLS configs can be complex for large uh, clusters. That's another consideration, uh, partially because you're going to have a lot of roles and a lot of uh, rules as far as um, who can talk to who and when they can do that. Um, it's all manageable, but uh, it's not uh, just uh, deploy the mesh and then expect everything to work. One of the things that instantly sold me on service meshes was the observability that you gain. Uh, in particular, the Kiali dashboard I thought was amazing. Instead of having to uh, manually create the service topologies or the overall network graph, it's already there for you in real time. You can see who's talking to who at any given instant and what they're actually doing. Do service meshes solve the new network challenges? I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, within the Kubernetes cluster, now we have identity, observability, the ability to audit, the ability to uh, provide micro-segmentation and whitelist. I think this solves a lot of the problems that exist within uh, microservice architectures. However, uh, not everybody just has a single Kubernetes cluster, and the network is much larger, as we discussed before. Not everybody is going to have just a single Kubernetes cluster. In the case where you have many clusters, Istio has two different solutions. One is with a shared control plane 
And in that case, you only have to deploy the controllers in one cluster, and they will manage all of the clusters that are on the same contiguous network block. In that case, you will get MTLS between all the services, but um, you are uh, essentially restricted to one geolocation. The other option is a replicated control plane where same root CA is used for all clusters and the Istio control plane is uh, run on every single cluster uh, as pretty much a replica. Uh, with this type of a model, you get uh, encrypted uh, cross-cluster uh, traffic through a gateway instead of service to service directly. And this is possible uh, because you're using the same credentials. Now I'd like to talk about some of my personal experiences with Istio. I used Istio 1.0 to 1.5 in production, and I've seen huge improvements in stability. Uh, some of the alpha APIs have changed, that was expected. In particular, I would say the security APIs changed uh, more than uh, most others. Um, I've used MTLS, routing features, tracing, and Kiali. And I only use Istio in a single cluster uh, environment. Uh, for instance, one cluster for prod, staging, uh, or dev company-wide. Uh, I've used uh, multi-cluster Istio managed by GNS, which I'll talk about later, uh, but I never used uh, Istio multi-cluster uh, as a native feature. Over the years and many versions that I've used Istio, um, I encountered a few issues that stood out. One was the port name issue, which was uh, all the way back in 1.0. Uh, the problem was all service to service connectivity was broken. And it was because Envoy requires a specific port name convention. Uh, the solution to that was to uh, use an emission controller and Istio now has logging uh, to alert for config errors, which didn't exist uh, back in that version when this was a problem for me. Another thing I noticed was that Pilot had very high CPU usage in one of the earlier versions, and it was unable to keep up with updates. Uh, that's because you're supposed to use a sidecar CRD to limit resource advertisements. Uh, eventually, your cluster will get to a size where uh, it's unable to process everything uh, if there is like a network-wide flap. There was a bug that uh, was pretty damaging for production, and it was after some time, ingress gateways would stop forwarding traffic, and the root cause ended up being the Envoy state machine can get stuck and unable to process listener updates. Uh, my team actually pushed uh, fix upstream to Envoy so that all users would not encounter this issue. There was another bug that uh, was noticed in production, which is the gateway SDS bug. Uh, basically, TLS and TLS gateways were not forwarding traffic uh, root cause was uh, there wasn't an update uh, being pushed, and uh, fortunately, the Istio team ended up fixing it in release 1.7. Despite the challenges that I've seen with Istio, uh, I'd say Istio development is shifting from features first to reliability and stability, and the later versions of Istio are much more enterprise grade than they've ever been. Multiple Kates clusters running Istio has been addressed, but what about the rest of the network? As I said before, the enterprise network is now multi-cloud, multi-location, and multi-platform, and we now have monoliths mixed with uh, microservices. A whole set of new challenges that need to be addressed. To address some of the remaining challenges or problems that uh, Istio alone doesn't address, uh, I'd like to introduce the concept of a global namespace. Uh, global namespace, or GNS, is an abstraction that enables users to securely deploy and manage interconnected applications agnostic of the platform or location. Any service within a GNS can securely communicate with all other services within the same GNS by default, and federation policies allow inter-GNS communication uh, as far as uh, how a GNS works, uh, I uh, would like you to think of it as a, a, a controller for your service meshes controllers. Uh, you can um, 
federate uh, many different uh, uh, service meshes uh, or um, load balancers, gateways, um, firewalls, and uh, access uh, a unified control plane for all of them. Therefore, your large modern enterprise network uh, has one management access point where you have full visibility as well. An example GNS uh, use case could be where you have two clusters and uh, two different namespaces. Uh, in this situation, it doesn't matter where your application pods are deployed, they should be able to communicate with each other um, by default across uh, clusters, cross namespaces, uh, with fully encrypted uh, MTLS connections. We can extend the global namespace uh, to the enterprise network uh, example where we have a Kubernetes cluster and uh, uh, namespace foo that has two pods and those pods uh, should be able to communicate with uh, legacy VM workloads uh, that potentially could be in a vSphere cluster. Uh, GNS should take care of all the interconnectivity and uh, encrypt all connect, uh, connections uh, between the pods and the VMs. Global namespaces should also provide dedicated DNS per global namespace. Uh, services should not be discoverable external to the GNS except if explicitly configured. And gateways, uh, ingress and egress, uh, can be shared cluster-wide if isolation is not critical. And we can have dedicated gateways per GNS for sensitive workloads, uh, specifically in the case of a multi-tier or multi-privilege application or uh, network. I believe the policies, uh, specifically security policies, can be greatly reduced in complexity with the global namespace concept. For example, with external services, services within a GNS should be able to access the same whitelisted public IPs or domains uh, merely because they're part of the same privilege uh, uh, level. Every service within a GNS can talk to every other service within the GNS. Therefore, they should also be able to talk to the same external services. Um, as far as uh, uh, exposing those services, you can have global public services. Uh, ser select services should be exposed to workloads outside of Kates uh, so that we can uh, interconnect uh, our VM workloads uh, with our microservice deployments uh, uh, in the hybrid network uh, of uh, current times. And we can also allow HA and global load balancing with the global namespace concept as well. Um, overall, I think Istio and the global namespace concept solves most, if not all, of the modern network security uh, challenges that are presented. We don't have to worry about uh, route injections, uh, DNS hijacking. We can track who we're talking to, uh, source and destination with uh, workload identities. Um, it's overall a much safer environment that we can like monitor with observability and audit when things go wrong. Now I'd like to wrap everything up and let's summarize some of the conclusions we came to. Istio does solve many of the modern network security challenges that exist. And Istio is prioritizing stability and supporting multi-cluster. Ultimately, the concept of global namespaces is needed for the modern hybrid network that mixes old monoliths with new containers. I think we are heading in the right direction, and a lot of the problems that exist now or will become problems because of the direction we're going in will be addressed. I hope you enjoyed my talk. I left my contact info on this slide here. Please feel free to reach out with any questions regarding what we just discussed. I'm happy to answer uh, any and all questions.